Have you ever wondered what goes on in an artist's mind when they're drawing? In this video, I'll try to share what goes through my mind when I'm trying to get a handle on a scene that's right there in front of me. Hi, I'm Jim Crandall. I've been a professional illustrator and artist for all of my adult life, and I'm here to share with you a few of the things that I've picked up along the way. I'm going to try something new here with a progression of images. I'll try to show the steps that I might take when confronted with a new subject that I want to sketch out in a short period of time. This might be a prelude to putting down paint, or an end in itself as a drawing. This is a method that uses basic visual measurements and the creation of guidelines. And it's one that I can use whether or not I know anything about the subject. It's just based on what I can see. I can always redesign the shapes that I capture later, but I like to start here. Okay, let's imagine that we're looking at this scene. This happens to be just outside Zion National Park in Utah. To help me explain my thought process, I'm going to cover this image with a whitish haze to represent my drawing paper. From time to time, I'll switch off the photo so you can see how the drawing is looking on its own. My eye level is about here. If I moved all the way in, that's where my face would hit the wall. This will be good to remember later on because I will know that everything above this line I'm looking a little bit up at like the underside of the eaves, and everything below the line I'm looking down at, like the top surface of the porch and the ground in the foreground. But for now, let's keep things simple. First, I'm going to look for something obvious that I can take a measurement of. It's kind of arbitrary, but I'm just going to choose the width of the porch from the setback wall to the outer post. Here's the vertical to represent that wall break and another to represent the post. With my free hand extended I can take that length with a pencil or a stick and see how it compares with the rest of the building. This measurement gets me about to the far side of the window and I make a tick there. I notice that the window is about as wide as the extra amount of building that I need and I mark those distances as well. And there's the other side of the building and the sides of the window. To get the top and bottom limits of the window, I notice where a visually extended line would hit. In this case, just below the porch roof line I started with and halfway down the setback wall. These measurements can be of anything that occurs to me on the spot, just as long as they're fairly large elements. Now when I go to put in my first roof line, I can use the already established marks to find the correct angle and place. I visually check to see where an extended version of the line would intersect my existing lines. This one seems to hit about where the porch post hits the ground. Any alignment that I can notice is fair game. The slope of the dark hillside seems to pass through the end of the gable barge board and hit the ground somewhere where the far side of the window line would hit the ground. Here's my drawing so far. Not much, but I've already captured the proportions of the main house and started to orient it to elements in the background. The second roof line in this case seems to be a mirror image of the first, so that's easy enough. I'm not afraid to extend this guideline on my paper. It might come in handy for other measurements. For instance, it seems to hit the ground about twice the distance that the back porch seems to come away from the house. When I rough in other elements, I can put in lines that approximate the angle that I see 
and which intersect with points on other guidelines that are already on the page. Any kind of generalization that makes sense to me is fine, especially when it comes to natural features. Things that I know to be horizontal or vertical are good guideposts. So here we are so far, clearly a building in an environment. Blocking in smaller shapes should be easier now since they can always be seen in relation to the larger masses. How high is that front chimney? Well, where does the horizontal hit the line of the dark hillside? And the top of the back chimney seems about even with the peak of the roof gable. No comparisons are wrong if you can see them. It's guessing and assuming that can get you into trouble. The top edge of the far roof ridge seems to intersect below where the near chimney hits, but above where the far chimney does. And so I go on comparing lengths and angles of new shapes with existing ones noticing how the extension of new lines meet the lines and intersections already established. It's not just objects that are shapes, shadows are shapes too. Here we are with a well-defined house. From here it's almost just making connections and adding detail shapes. Verticals and horizontals just need to be put in as divisions of larger shapes. Always checking to see that they are lining up with the right things. And it's always a good idea to notice if appropriate negative shapes are being created. If not, something needs realignment. At some point, all the critical proportions have been established and the supporting characters can be winged. Where accuracy seems needed, placement can still be made relative to existing elements. Natural elements, like trees, mountains, rocks, these are all opportunities to depart from precision and just to design a pleasing, simplified shape that supports the overall composition. This foundation laid during the early, very deliberate process now allows for greater freedom because we're free to concentrate on tone or even color without the burden of figuring out where strokes ought to be placed. I hope that was helpful. I actually make many more comparisons and judgments during the course of a drawing than those I expressed here, but I hope this animation expressed my way of thinking and was of some help to you. If it was, I hope you'll hit the like button. Don't forget to visit my website at jamescrandall.com and follow the link to subscribe to my newsletter for the latest news about my paintings, gallery events, workshops, and classes. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. See you next time.